hello friends hope your preparation is going well so uh, till now we have explained uh, everything about tractor dynamics static weight distribution as well as dynamic weight distribution dynamic weight distribution in uh, both tractor and implement combination as well as tractor trolley combination okay then we have seen stability then we have seen uh, uh, both condition tractor center of gravity determination as well as tractor moment of inertia determination okay now in this video i am going to explain some of the numericals i'm going to solve uh, some four five years numerical problems on whatever concepts i have taught you till now okay if you have not watched theory part then first go back and watch watch all those theory and then come back and watch this video on numerical problems okay so moving ahead uh, this is me now we will start from 2017 the year 2017 okay so in 2017 they have asked two problems on these concepts first one was 12th number problem problem was a tractor pulls 8 kN drawbar load against 4 kN rolling resistance. So if the tractor develops 57% tractive efficiency, then the slip experienced by the tractor in percentage will be. Okay guys, so they have given pull, they have given rolling resistance, they have given tractive efficiency and we have to calculate slip. So they have given P 8 kN, rolling resistance 4 kN, tractive efficiency 57% and you have to find out slip. So this is a very straightforward question directly based on numerical problem, uh, simple formula of tractive efficiency. So as you know, all know that tractive efficiency is input by output. Okay, or in reverse order, output by input. So your output is basically pull. And your input is basically pull plus rolling resistance and so your slippage basically wastage so you all know the tractive efficiency formula p by p plus rr into 1 minus f s if you have doubt on this formula then guys please stop here and go back and watch my uh, video lecture series on traction so watch tire and traction theory series completely then you understand you will you get to know how it is coming and from where it is coming okay but if you watch those videos and if your concepts are clear, then this is a very simple, straightforward question. So you have value of P, you have value of RR, you have value of tractive efficiency. So from here, you just need to put the values and you will get S equals to 0 0.145. Or in percentage terms, it will be 14.5%, which will be the answer of this question. So this is a simple question, guys. Now moving ahead is 38 number problem okay now the question says a tractor of 19.5 kilonewton weight and 1.8 meter wheelbase has 70 percent static weight on the rear axle okay now this tractor pulls 8 kilonewton drawbar load which is parallel to the ground okay through a hitch point located 450 mm above the ground so you have to calculate the dynamic weight which is coming on the rear axle of the tractor under operating conditions in kilonewton okay guys so whenever you see this type of questions where a lot of information are given like wheelbase uh, static weight distribution 70 30 uh, location of hitch point and uh, pull then the first thing is you should draw the basic figure okay so here the data which is being given is weight of tractor 19.5 kN wheelbase L 1.8 meter. Now they have given that weight distribution is 70-30. Okay, in a static condition. So 70% weight will come on rear, 30% will come on front. Okay. So 70% of 19.5 to so 13.65 kN will come on rear in a static condition. 5.8, which is 30% of 19.5. This will come on the front and pull also they have given 8 kN. Okay, guys. So first thing first, as I have told you, just make a small diagram of tractor. So I hope that you have understood the theory part. So now if you have really understood, 
then this figure will be, should be clear to you. So this is the fuel base, which is 1.8. Then this is a pull point, pull force, which is 8 kilonewton. This is a hitch point, whose uh, vertical location from the ground is 0 0.45 meter. So it is given 450 mm. Now this is the front tire, this is the rear tire, this is the RR, this is the RF. So in dynamic condition, this pull will act. In a static condition, all other things will remain the same, only this P will not be there. Okay, and then this is small L is the location of center of gravity. This is center of gravity point, then location of center of gravity from the rear axle center, and weight will obviously act downward. So if we I have not drawn a static condition figure, this is a dynamic condition figure. I hope that you guys know how to do a static condition. So now if you see in a static condition, what will happen? This RF. So in a static condition, first thing is this pull will not be there. Okay. Now just leave this pull aside. Just see. Just take the moment about point. Uh, this point A. Okay. So if you take moment about point A, this RR will try to rotate this tractor in and in clockwise direction. Okay. And then this WT. WT will try to rotate in anti-clockwise direction. Okay. So this will be RR into capital L. That's what I have written. RR into capital L will be equal to WT into this distance will be a capital L minus a small l. So capital L minus a small l. So from where you can get the value of capital L minus a small l which will be 1.26 meter. Guys you can find out value of a small l also from here but I have kept it like L minus L only because this directly we can use it. Okay now you can take a moment about this point also that whether you are taking a moment about this point or this point that is not going to make any difference in your answer okay so it's just up to you whatever you are comfortable with you can do that so this is in a static condition now in dynamic condition this pull will act so this pull p will give moment okay so now if you take moment again moment about same point a then again this p this p will try to rotate this whole tractor in anti clockwise direction so in this condition in dynamic condition if you take moment about point a then rr into capital L and lhs will remain same but in rhs wt which is trying to rotate the tractor in counter clockwise direction so in the same direction this p will also try to this this wt will try to rotate with the tractor in counter clockwise direction same way p will also try to rotate the tractor in counter clockwise direction so wt into l minus l plus p into this 0.45 so this is the basic equation now you know all the things you have to calculate basically this rr which is dynamic condition weight on rear axle now guys the question comes why i have taken a moment about point a i could have taken a moment about this point but the question says that you have to find out dynamic weight on rear axle so you need to find out rr if you take a moment about this point then rr will not come in the equation because rr will pass is passing through this point in that case you will calculate rf and again you have to subtract it from wt to get rr so it's uh, to just to skip that step i have taken a moment about point a so that rr will directly come into equation and we can from here you know every term you know will base l wt l minus l already we have calculated 1.26 and p you already know so just put the value and get the result so you will get rr 15.65 kilo newton okay guys so i hope that your doubt is clear regarding this problem this is a simple problem if you understood the concept behind this okay if you haven't understood the concept then you will not be able to solve or you will make some mistake somewhere so the first step in all the all these type of question will generally i'm saying generally what they will do is they will not give the value of a small l or the location of uh, horizontal location of center of gravity in a static condition rather they will give weight distribution so the importance of weight distribution is just to calculate this small l in all these type of question all questions based on tractor dynamics or weight distribution this thing this thing remains common that they will give some weight distribution they will give you wheelbase and they will give you total weight of tractor and always you have to do this thing in a static condition uh, moment balance and from here you have to calculate first thing which is horizontal location of center of gravity with the help of uh, your weight distribution okay or in reverse case what they can also do they will not give you weight distribution rather they will give you this small l and capital l 
So on the basis of these two, you have to calculate this weight distribution at 70, 30 or whatever in a static condition. Okay, so normally they will play around this and then you will have P either acting horizontal in case of tractor trolley combination or it may also act at some certain angle if some implement is there with at some certain angle theta. Okay, so again in that case you will have P cos theta in horizontal direction, P sin theta in vertical direction. So this moment equation will only change which will happen in this type of question. So what you need to understand is how to balance the forces and how to balance the moment. Okay friends. So these are the two questions which has been uh, asked in 2017. Other questions were not from this area. Okay, and as you have seen that you can easily solve these two problems if you know the concept. Okay, now coming to 2016. 2016 47th number problem. Okay, uh, the question says this is a longer, very long question, but if you really know, you can solve it easily. The question says a tractor weighing 21 kilonewton. Okay, weight of tractor is. 21 kilonewton has 70% static weight on the rear and the wheelbase is 1.8 meter. The drawbar hitch is located 25 centimeter behind the rear axle center and 35 centimeter above the ground level. Okay, now what they are saying to overcome longitudinal instability. Guys, longitudinal instability is what? The lifting of front wheel. Okay, so to avoid that, they have put some front end loading or basically ballast weight at a distance of 20 centimeter ahead of front axle center. So you all know that ballast weight is being added just ahead of front axle center. And they have given that it has been added at 20 centimeter ahead of front axle center. Okay. So now it is being observed that there is front end instability in the tractor due to a pull of 30 kilonewton, which is inclined at 20 degree downward from the horizontal. So just now I was uh, I was telling to you that in some cases they might ask that pull is not horizontal, rather it is act, uh, it is acting at certain angle. So in this case, as you can see that pull is acting, 30 kilonewton pull is acting at 20 degree angle from horizontal. Okay. Now you have to find out the minimum fronted load which is required to overcome instability in the tractor. Okay, guys, now see, this is a conceptual problem. This is a very good problem, and this will test all your concept of weight distribution. So, basically, what is happening in this case uh, is you have a tractor and you have an implement which is attached behind the tractor. Due to that implement, this pull of 30 kN is acting at angle of 20 degree. And because this pull is acting at 20 degree, there are moment which is coming, and due to that moment, weight transfer is happening from the front to rear. So due to that weight transfer, front is a start lifting and that is what we call instability, longitudinal instability. Now you don't want instability, so you need to put some ballast weight. So the question is asking how much ballast weight? The location of ballast weight is given 20 centimeter ahead of front axle. Now so simply this question is asking how much ballast weight or how much weight you should put in the front to just to stop the lifting of front tire or just to overcome the instability so it's a beautiful question so now again the first thing first you have to draw the figure so here i have drawn in a static condition there is no pull only uh, CG, weight will act at cg to support rr and rf will act at front and rear tire this is a wheelbase l this is a small l okay now they have given weight of tractor 21 kilonewton in the problem and they have given weight distribution 70 percent 70 30. so 70 percent of the weight will come on the rear so 70 percent of 21 is 14.7 30 percent of weight will come on the front so 30 percent of uh, 21 is 6.3 kilonewton and they have given wheelbase l 1.8 meter now if you have, if you have understood the previous question then you know uh, the significance of this so significance of this is to calculate a small l as I have, I have explained to you earlier so again taking moment about point a you can take about point b also that is not going to make any difference okay so if you take moment rf into capital l try to rotate the tractor in counterclockwise w2 into l try to rotate it in clockwise so from here you can find out a small l 
so a small l will be 0 0.54 meter 54 meter okay so this is the significance of a static condition you have to find out a small l now moving ahead guys i have already explained to you this slide okay so if you have watched my that uh, my tractor dynamics uh, videos completely then you are aware about this slide in which i have explained to you the maximum amount of pull at which the operation will be stable if your pull is more than this p then the front will start lifting so basically what i did in this this uh, video is i have explained to you how to calculate rf in dynamic condition okay so finally this was my rf equation now the operation is, if the operation is just stable okay then this rf should be either equal to or greater than zero okay so for this just overcoming instability rf will be zero so if rf will be zero then this, this term will be equal to this term that is what i have done here for stability and from here you can calculate this p okay so same concept will apply in this problem so if you have understood this concept then you can easily solve this problem okay now coming back to this problem in dynamic condition this will be the figure okay so uh, the weight is acting at cg this is the fuel base this is the location of central gravity from the axis center now which point they have given p at angle 20 degree so this horizontal component will be p cos theta this component will be p sin 20 okay now height of each point from ground is y1 then location horizontal distance of each point from Rear axis center, I have assumed it as y2. Now they have given question that at 20, uh, 20 distance from front axle center, they are putting some weight for stability. So if you put this 0 0.2 meter, this weight is acting. So this weight, weight will always, always act in downward direction. So again, you have to take moments. Okay, guys. So now the data. 30 kilonewton, the theta is 20 degree, y1, y1 is 0 0.35, this y2 is 0 0.25, and this x is 0 0.2 meter. Okay, now moving ahead, taking the moment about point A, you can take moment about point B also. Okay, now you see carefully this RF. If you take moment about point A, this is the point A, so RF will try to rotate system in anti clockwise, so RF into L will try to rotate in anti clockwise. Then this P cos theta, P cos theta will also try to rotate in same direction in anti-clockwise. So P cos theta into Y1. Same way, P sine 20 into Y2. P sine theta into Y2. This whole thing we will try to rotate in contra-clockwise direction. Now to balance it, this weight will act in clockwise direction. So WT into a small l. Okay. And you are also putting this second weight. So this all this weight also will try to balance it. it try to rotate it in clockwise direction so this w into this distance up to here is x and from here to here it is l so it will be x plus l so wt is the weight of tractor and this w is whatever weight you need to put on the tractor to overcome instability okay i hope that this equation is clear now if this equation is clear then you have the value of each and every component which is being written here okay guys now from here you can find out the value of rf okay so you know this equation just take everything in rhs and just to calculate rf from this equation so that rf will be this now if you remember that slide which i have taught you in stability um, in stability thing then you will get to know that only this component w into x plus l by l this is getting added all other things this and this is same as like as it was in uh, that previous equation so this is the equation of rf now as i have told you just to overcome instability this rf should be either equal to zero or greater than zero now it is the, in the question they are asking just to overcome instability so just to overcome instability this rf should be zero okay now if you make rf zero then so that is what i have written for minimum front end load required to provide stability rf will be zero will be zero your this component will equal to this component 
so this component will equal to this component now you have value of each and everything wt weight abstracted you know a small l we have already calculated capital l will be you know now uh, x already given in the question pool already given in the question y1 y2 is given theta is given so only w is unknown so you can just put the value and get the result so just putting the value this will be the equation of w now put each and everything here you will get the value of w as 0.5459 kilo newton so in newton it will be 545.9 okay guys so this will be the answer of this question as per my understanding now now the trick in this problem is if you see the answer key which has been provided by official answer key which is which is been given by gate then there is their answer is somewhere like 730 newton or something like that so i don't think the answer will be 700 as per me the answer should be 545.9 newton so i believe that answer is wrong if you have some other point of view in this problem then you can write to me in the comment section i will be more than happy to reply you over there and we all will discuss together whether uh, that answer which has been given officially by gate that is correct or this answer is correct but as far as my uh, problem solving is concerned so this calculation i have checked twice so it is come 545.9 newton only okay so just write to me in the comment section what do you feel about that problem now we have solved 17 2017 problem we have solved 2016 we have solved 2015 now coming to 2014 so 30 second number problem okay guys so the question says a four wheel drive tractor has a static weight of 50 kN with 40% weight on rear and 60% weight on the front okay the wheel base is 2 meter the tractor is pulling a disc harrow that exerts level level draw or pull at a hitch height of 0.5 meter from the ground during the operation when dynamic reaction on each axle is same the dynamic traction ratio developed by the tractor is so basically you have to calculate traction ratio tr net traction ratio or coefficient of traction okay all are same this problem just read it carefully this is a four wheel drive tractor if you see the example as i have told you in case of two wheel drive the weight distribution normally in a static condition will be 60 40 or 70 30 and when it goes to dynamic condition in that case weight distribution will become 80 20 80% on rear 20% on the front but if you see the four wheel drive tractor so as i have explained to you in my videos that four wheel drive tractor all four tires will produce traction so tire will help in producing traction so in this case same amount of weight should come on both rear as well as front so due to that normally what they are doing tractor design tractor companies are doing they will put 40% weight on the rear 60% weight on the front in a static condition now when the tractor will go in the field or if you see the tractor in dynamic condition then what will happen the weight transfer will happen from the front to rear due to uh, this pull component and the weight distribution will become 50 50 so same amount of weight will come on the rear as well as front so that all four tire will be able to produce traction so that is the theory part now coming on solving this problem so again same uh, same thing will apply you have to make diagram in a static condition so uh, tractor is moving in this direction this is a cg location so weight is acting weight is given 50 kN this is the location of cg from front axle center this wheel base is 2 meter rf they have given 40% weight on the rear so 40% of 50 is how much 20 kN on the rear and 60% of weight is coming in the front so 60% of 50 is, is 13 kN so 30 kN is coming on the front 20 kN is coming on the rear so just by reading the question you, you should be able to draw this figure okay now again the same thing which i have explained to you the use, use of a static condition you have to calculate this so in the location of cg so this x will be rx r into l by w so i hope that now you know how to do this i have already explained to you in detail this concept in my, uh, previous two three questions so this x will be 0.8 meter so with the help of a static 
we have calculated this location of CG from either rear axle center or front axle center center. Okay. Now, in dynamic condition, this pull will act. Now they are saying that uh, this pull is a label label pull. It is not acting at any angle. So they have simplified the problem for you. So this pull is acting horizontal. And uh, this height is 0.5 meter from the ground. Okay, so you have to calculate dynamic traction ratio for this condition. So this is the dynamic condition. The, so what you need to do is you have to balance the force and you have to balance the moments. Okay, so this is the point A, this is the point B. So all vertical force should be balanced. So they have given in dynamic equal equal force distribution will happen. So this RF, if you see vertical force, RF, eject, RF dash is acting upward, RR dash is acting upward, W is coming downward. So R dash F plus R dash R will be equal to W. Now they have given that this R dash F will be equal to R dash R, R, which I have already explained to you that in dynamic condition, both rear as well as front weight will be same. So from here you can find out RR dash and RF dash, which will be 25 kilometer and a half of this 50. Okay, now moving ahead, taking balancing the moment. So if you take a moment about point A, and then this RR will try to rotate the system in anti-clockwise. So RR dash into two. Okay, W will try try to rotate this system in clockwise. So W into x, which is 0 0.8. Okay, and then this P, this P will also try to rotate it in clockwise direction. Okay, so R dash into R dash R into two minus W into 0 0.8 minus P into 0 0.5 will be equal to zero. Now you have value of each and every component except P. Just put the value and get the result. So I put all the values and you can calculate P. So P is basically 20 kilo Newton. So now you know the value of pull. So they are asking you dynamic traction ratio. It is nothing but the coefficient of traction or net traction ratio. Now, guys, don't ask me what is dynamic, what is net traction ratio or coefficient of traction because I've already explained to you in detail what is coefficient of traction, COT or NTR. So it is basically pull by dynamic weight. Okay. Now the tricky point comes here. You already know the value of pull, which is Newton. You have calculated. Now comes to dynamic weight. If you have seen my video, I have explained to you that net traction ratio or coefficient of traction will be P by RR. Okay, guys. Why we have taken only P by RR is because I have uh, explained that in two wheel drive tractor scenario. Okay, now in this problem, this is a four wheel drive tractor. So all four wheel are producing, all four wheels are producing traction. And same weight is coming on the front as well as on the rear. So normally in case of two wheel drive tractor, we are neglecting the traction which is being generated by front wheels. But in this case, which is a four wheel drive tractor, we cannot neglect the traction force which is being generated by the front wheels. Okay. So in this case, you will not take only RR, rather you will take both RR and RF. That is you have to take complete dynamic weight. Okay, that is why here we have taken 50. So it will be 20 by 50, not 20 by 25. So because it is 20 by 50, so the answer will be 0 0.4. Okay, friends. Still, if you have doubt regarding this, you can ask me in the comment section. But I hope that it is clear now. Okay. So this second option, B option, will be correct, which is 0 0.4. Now, if the question, if they will just change the question sentence of this question from four wheel to two wheel, and if all these things will remain same, okay, then you have to neglect the traction generated by front. And what will happen in that case? Your pull will be 20 by 25. Okay, so your traction will generate, your coefficient of traction will become simply half. Instead of 0 0.4, it will become 0 0.2. So I think that this is the mistake which you can make in examination hall in the type of problems. So just keep in mind whether it is a four wheel drive tractor or it is a two wheel drive tractor. If it is a two wheel drive tractor, then your coefficient of traction will be pull by rear rex only RR. Okay. And if it is a four wheel drive tractor, then it will be the complete weight of tractor. Okay, friends. So this is a 213 problem. This was a very beautiful problem. Okay, now moving ahead, coming to 2013, 52nd, 53rd. 
which was the linked problem okay so the question says a two wheel drive tractor weighing 21 kN it is a two wheel drive tractor so the one problem is simplified weight of tractor is 21 kN wheel base capital L is 2.1 meter cg already they have given 0.7 meter ahead of rear axle center so they have simplified the problem for you now the tractor is pulling a single axle trailer with gross trailer weight of 50 kN on a labeled concrete road okay and line of pull is parallel to the ground surface the tractor hitch point is 42 cm behind the rear axle center and 52.5 cm above the ground surface okay now during operation 20% of gross trailer weight is transferred to the tractor hitch point guys if you have seen my video on tractor trolley combination then and in that video i have already told you for a single axle trailer usually 20% of gross trailer weight will be supported by tractor or will come at tractor drawbar and that is what they have given in the problem also 20% of gross trailer weight is transferred to the tractor hitch point but if it is not a single excel trailer, if it is a double excel trailer, then then no weight is being supported by the tractor. Okay, in case of double excel trailer, complete weight of trailer will be supported by trailer itself. No weight will come on tractor drawbar. Okay, so because of that only, double excel trailer will be more stable because no weight is coming on the drawbar, so no moment will be created and and no weight transfer will happen from front to rear okay now coming back to question so it is a single axle trailer and 20 percent of it is coming on tractor now they have given that coefficient of rolling resistance for each of the tractor and trailer is 0 0.04 so for the combined tractor and trailer the coefficient of resistance is 0 0.04 and ground reactions are passing through their respective wheel center they are not eccentric but in actual condition they will be eccentric for eccentric condition also i have taught you how to take moments and how to balance the forces and how to calculate all these things so numericals will problems will always be simplified okay so the first problem says you have to calculate dynamic ground reaction against tractor rear wheel and in the second question you have to find out gross traction ratio gtr so first you will see the first problem 52 number problem again by reading the problem just draw the figure okay so this is a static condition figure w is 31 uh, this location of cg from rear axle center is 0.7 meter wheel base is 2.1 this is front wheel support this is rear wheel support in a static condition okay so again balancing the forces rf and rr will be equal to 21 kN. taking the moment about this point so rf into l will be equal to w into a small l okay this one so from here you can calculate rr and rf in a static condition so normally in previous questions they have given uh, weight distribution 70 30 or 60 40 so they have given basically rr and rf so in those questions with the help of rr and rf you need to calculate a small l in this question they have reversed they have given a small l and capital l so in this question with the help of these two you need to calculate rr and rf okay so it's simple now this is uh, you know uh, small l you know rr you know rf so all a static condition information you have now we to dynamic condition so in dynamic condition this pull is acting in this direction now weight of trolley is acting 20% uh, of weight of trolley is acting on the tractor drawbar so that is what we have written as v so v will be 20% and the pull is uh, tractor is basically pulling 50 kN gross weight of trolley now this height they have given 0 0.525 and this length they have given 0 0.42 meter now guys see the beauty of your linkage if you increase your this linkage length drawer linkage length then you know that v force is v force is coming here so due to this v force the moment will come and this v force will try to rotate the tractor in anti-clockwise direction or basically it will try to lift your front wheel so if you increase this length then the moment will be higher and this weight transfer will be higher and your op whole operation will become unstable so the length of linkage linkages how uh, you are putting everything will uh, play a role in tractor dynamics okay guys so this is the beauty of tractor dynamics for which you need to understand uh, the whole concept holistically
okay now again coming back to problem now this is rr dash and rf dash in dynamic condition now they have given v as 20 percent of gross trolley weight so we will be 0 0.2 of 50 so it is 10 kilo newton okay now coefficient of rolling resistance they have given 0 0.04 so basically if you see pull so if you know what coefficient of resistance is it will basically act as a rolling resistance so how much resistance this trolley is putting so it will be simply 0 0.04 into 50 50 is a gross weight of trolley so it p will be 2 kilo newton okay guys so this tractor is pulling basically 2 kilo newton load okay now the balancing of forces so this is pretty much clear rr dash and rf dash is acting in upward direction w and v is acting in downward direction so w you know v you know so r dash f plus r dash r will be 31 okay 21 plus 10 now moving ahead balancing the moment about point a again r dash r r dash into l anti-clockwise direction w into l minus l w into capital l minus a small l clockwise direction v v will try to rotate in clockwise direction now this will be equal to l this l1 plus capital l so that is what i have written l1 plus capital l and this pull p this will also act in clockwise direction so p into this drawbar height h again you see if you increase this height then this p into h component will be high and due to that your r this rr will be high if rr will be high then rf will be less so again the front will start lifting so this everything will play their role in uh, dynamic stability and static stability now you have value of everything just put the values and see the value of rr dash so if you put value of all other things you will get the value of rr dash which is coming in this case as 26.5 kilo newton the option which is closest to this is 26.4 kilo newton so i believe that that is the right answer so it is coming 26.5 and this is how it is coming okay now moving to second part second part they are asking about gross traction ratio so gross traction ratio is basically gross traction divided by dynamic weight or simply weight whatever you are comfortable with now gross traction is basically motion resistance plus net traction i hope that this thing is clear if you still have doubt then just go by back and watch my complete tire and traction theory series video where i have explained all these traction ratios okay so this gtr will be equal to mrr plus ntr now mrr for the system they have given 0 0.04 ntr ntr is what i have already explained py dynamic weight now p you have calculated to kilonewton and uh, wd rr does now it is a two wheel drive tractor so you can ignore this rf thing so you just rr dash will be there which you have calculated from previous question 26.5 so just put it 0 0.04 plus 2 by 26.5 so the answer is coming 0 0.11 okay so in this case the option which whatever they have given that is not exactly matching but the closest option which is coming in these two cases are 26.4 and 0 0.108 so these two are closest options so these two will be correct d option and c option so this is problem number 52 153 which has been asked in 2013 okay guys so I hope your concept is clear. Now moving to 2012, 34 number problem. Now the question says a two wheel drive tractor weighing 15.84 kN with a wheel base of this much has a static weight distribution in the ratio of 30 to 70. Okay, so you already know what to do with this. Which point height they have given 700 meter from the ground and horizontal distance they have given 120 meter. From the rear axle center then pull is acting at 12 degree from the horizontal now they're asking maximum pull in kilonewton when the front wheel will just start rising from the ground so again this is the same problem which i have solved that front ballast problem this is also based on same concept so if you have remember if you are remembering this this concept the amount of p this is the same you can directly use this formula to solve this problem 
so i am using directly this formula to solve this problem but for you i would recommend that you understood this you just go through it carefully just try to drive the drive this whole thing on your notebook on your own and then only you use this formula okay now coming back to the problem so they have given the front tire support rear tire support wheel base weight is acting at cg now this is the pull point acting at 12 degree so this horizontal component p cos theta vertical component p sin theta this height is given y1 this distance is given y2 y1 they have given 700 mm y2 they have given 120 mm okay so weight they have given 15.84 30 70 weight distribution they have given so 70% weight will come on rear so it is rr is this much now i have not calculated rf because i am going to take a moment about point a or directly i will put the formula so again with the help of static condition you have to calculate capital l minus small l i hope that you are aware about this i have already explained this thing in my uh, in previous questions so this l minus l will be 1512 by putting all these things value of rr of wtl here so your l is 648 mm okay guys now in dynamic condition the same equation i am using p wl by y1 cos theta plus y2 sin theta so you have the value of w you have the value of a small l which i have calculated from a static condition over here you have y1 y2 theta everything so just put the value of everything over here and just get the result so p max is coming 14.4638 kN so this is the value of p at which the front wheel will just start rising so if you increase the value of p beyond this then your front wheel will lift okay guys so this is the answer final answer of this problem now they have given 14.46 so b option is correct so you know you see how you can utilize directly this equation so guys i have solved from 2017 to 2012 so 12 13 14 15 16 and 17 six years numerical problems i have solved for you i'm not going to solve any more problems now i hope that uh, all your concepts are clear all your doubts are clear so from my side this is the end of both traction theory series and tractor dynamics series so whatever i have promised to you in my first video of tire and traction theory about the content of these lectures i have covered each and everything okay and then i have solved whatever numerical i found to be useful for conceptual clarity i have solved all the numerical problems now if you still have any doubts or queries regarding anything you can ask me in the comment section okay guys so i hope that you have understood the complete concept behind all this theory and you have enjoyed the video so that's it guys thank you all for watching and please do subscribe this channel and like the video okay guys so again thank you very much for watching